All right, today's talk will be about bed bugs, presented by Dr. Siavash Teravati. Siavash is an urban and structural integrated pest management advisor in the Los Angeles basin area and has been with the UCIPM program since 2015. He's a trained entomologist and a licensed applicator who holds a qualified applicator license uh, from DPR and a structural field representative license from for, uh, the Structural Pest Control Board of California. He's experienced in taxonomy, ornamental entomology, and structural pest control. He performs research and extension on various structural and urban landscape pests such as drywood termites, cockroaches, ants, and as you'll hear today, bed bugs. Siavash, go ahead and uh, share your slides. Thank you very much, Carrie and Belinda. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, glad to be here. So let me go ahead and start sharing my screen. All right. So does it look good? Uh, do you see it full screen? Yep. Okay, Looks perfect. Great. All right. So, all right. Um, uh, hello again. My name is Steve Ash. And um, as Carrie mentioned, I reside Southern California in the LA County. And I focus on structural pest control. Um, on pests such as bed bugs, termites, cockroaches, and sometimes fleas, lice, and uh, pests like that. So for today's talk, I'm going to focus on bed bug prevention, uh, but, but to know how to prevent or avoid getting bed bugs, you need to know bed bugs biology. So, so I'm gonna talk about bed bugs biology a lot and then go over uh, bed bug prevention. Uh, this is the same thing that I just said. So bed bugs. Bed bugs are very important structural pests. I'm sure most of you have heard about bed bugs, and uh, many people have uh, have had a direct or indirect experience with bed bugs. Um, you know, you probably you know someone who had bed bugs, or or maybe you went on a trip and brought some bed bugs back or something like that. This is very common and no one should be ashamed of it because bed bug infestation doesn't have to do anything with you being clean uh, and uh, even doesn't have to, anything to do with your socioeconomic uh, uh, status. So the, there's several, uh, this, the, bed, the common bed bug comes from a family called Cymicidae, and there are many species uh, in this family, but we're going to focus, I'm going to focus on the common bed bug, the one that is the most problematic in the U.S. The uh, scientific name is Cymex lectularius, and it's a small parasitic insect. You can see an adult here. Uh, it has... Uh, let me use my pointer here. It, it has, uh, you can see the head. Uh, it has two antennae and you can see the wing pad here. There's another one, uh, another one here. You can see the abdomen and then the leg. So um, this is like, it looks like a typical insect. You know, the adults are brownish and about uh, three sixteen to a quarter inch. Uh, uh, this uh, their size usually they're nocturnal, but when the infestations are high or depending on the setting, you can see them during the day too. So it's not like they never come out during the day. They do, but it, usually they're nocturnal, and they cannot jump. They cannot fly, and they have to crawl to get to places. All right, and. Uh, the problem with bed bugs is that, of course, they feed on people. They bite uh, and they extract blood. They can, they can uh, irritate the skin. They can make it red and itchy. And, but not all people show bed bug symptoms. So sometimes uh, I talk to people like a couple, for example. Uh, one of them is having severe reactions uh, to bed bugs and the other person, the spouse, it doesn't have any symptoms, you know, doesn't have any idea that uh, he or she is being, being uh, bitten by bed bugs. So it totally depends on the person, on, uh, uh, on, on the physiology of the person. Um, sometimes bed bugs, not always, sometimes bed bugs bite in rows. As you can see here, 
uh, on the picture on right, uh, but not always. Uh, so when you see bytes in, in a row, then you can kind of, you know, uh, conclude that you may have bit bugs, but it's not reliable. Other than that, you can't really tell. Maybe the symptoms are coming, the welts or raised skin is caused by mosquito bites, flea bites, and sometimes allergy to particles. I mean, there's no uh, mite or bug. It just uh, the reaction of skin to uh, body particles like paper splinter, to carpet fibers, and things like that. And when people know that they have bed bugs in their place, you know, they become very anxious. It uh, disrupts their sleep and it really reduces the quality of life. Uh, as I mentioned, you can't reliably uh, identify bed bugs just by looking at someone's skin. So uh, please keep that in mind uh, because it's not very reliable. Uh, there are major uh, pests and nuisance pests and a pest of public health importance. So uh, in many places, Department of Public Health, Departments of Public Health uh, are kind of involved. And of course, the pest control industry, uh, uh, you know, is heavily involved in bed bug control. But the good news is that they don't transmit any diseases. Um, and this is very important. So unlike mosquitoes uh, that can transmit very dangerous diseases, bed bugs don't transmit any diseases. So they're not good. I mean, it's, it, it's not fun uh, having bed bugs at your home. Uh, but, but the good news is that they, they won't transmit any diseases. There hasn't been any case of bed bugs uh, disease uh, mm, mm, transmitted in the field. Uh, you can find bed bugs pretty much everywhere. You can find them in apartments, in houses, condos, airplanes, on trains, buses, theaters, gyms. I've seen uh, bed bugs at gyms my, uh, myself, and you, many reports, and I've seen them on buses. Uh, and so, you know, time to time, you hear it on the news that, you know, bed bugs were found on planes. Uh, coming from different places, uh, Europe, South America, everywhere. And uh, so, yeah, they're everywhere. Um, and in libraries, they infest beds, couches, stools, and especially upholstered uh, furniture. They love those because, you know, they, they can get a good grab, you know, a grasp on, and they can walk over them easily. And usually there, there's more space for them to hide and um, things like that. Bedbugs are most active when people are resting or sleeping. And that's uh, maybe the main reason that uh, they're considered uh, nocturnal and more active at night. But as I mentioned before, uh, when the infestation is high, you have a huge number of bedbugs. Uh, you can see them during the day too. And I've seen this uh, several times. So bed bugs are related to stink bugs. And actually, in fact, uh, if you squish a bed bug, uh, you will hear the same or a similar smell uh, that, you, that, that you can uh, smell when you squish a stink bug. So uh, they're related, both get their food using a straw-like uh, mouth bark uh, uh, called proboscis. Uh, and um, it's like a needle that bed bugs use to pierce the skin and then extract the blood. Uh, but one problem with bed with bed bug and bed bug uh, bed bug uh, treatment is that many people confuse bed bugs with other pests, and this is because you know there are two. Uh, they have heard about bed bugs and they know that they're around. And sometimes some people, some people, when they see anything, any uh, critter, any tiny bug that is moving around, they think it's, it's a bed bug. Uh, and it creates unnecessary uh, anxiety and concern in people. So uh, I'm gonna show you all the bed bug stages today. You're looking at adults here. So on left, you're seeing an adult uh, male. As you can see, the abdomen is a little bit pointed here. Uh, 
And on right, you see an adult female and uh, the body is more round, but the body changes, you know, when they feed on blood. And I'm gonna show you pictures later. So they're reddish brown uh, and um, gorge themselves with blood. Yeah, so this is a left male, right female. But how about the nymphs? Um, the adults you know, have this like mahogany, mahogany color, reddish brown. But nymphs, depending on whether they're fed, recently fed or not, they can have different colors. Uh, their body is, uh, especially the, the young nymphs, is kind of translucent, as you can see in this picture. But when they feed, you know, the blood color can be seen, you know, in their body. So they become kind of like, kind of like darker and it gets much easier to see them on white sheets on beds when they're fed. Uh, of course, uh, early stages are small and, and when they're not fed, they're hungry, they're translucent. It's pretty hard to see them. Uh, here you can see all the stages. This is uh, the egg. This is the first uh, instar. This is the second, third, fourth, uh, fifth. And then you're seeing an adult here. Uh, uh, and all of these are kind of like uh, hungry. They're starving. They're not fed. But when they're fed, if you look, the egg, uh, the eggs stay, uh, I mean, they can't feed, right? Because it, it's an egg. But all of the other stages become dark because they get the color from the blood. And initially they're like light red, bright red. And then uh, as, as, they, uh, as time passes by, you know, the color gets to, becomes brown and then kind of like semi-black as you can see here. So all of these bed bugs here, I would say they probably ate blood uh you know maybe several hours ago or maybe the day before or more so not just it's not a fresh uh, a uh, sorry a fresh feeding uh in uh, yeah all right so let's look at uh how bed bugs look like when when they're just with the uh, fed on blood as you can see this one shows uh when the bed bug starts to feed an adult bed bug, and then three minutes later, you can see the second picture, and then nine minutes later, and 12 minutes uh, afterwards. So as you can see, you know, they are able to expand their body like a telescope to accommodate uh, the blood that they're feeding on. So they, the shape gets totally different, you know. Uh, so you can't always say that, you know, bed bugs are round, oval, because look here, you know, they can get pretty elongated uh, because they just fed on a lot of blood and that's how they uh, engorge themselves. You know, that's the shape they get after feeding. If you disturb bed bugs while they're feeding, you know, they're gonna stop the feeding, move somewhere else. And then when it's the right time, when the host uh, humans, you know, go back to sleep, you know, they're going to show up again to complete their feeding. Uh, bed bugs are confused with cockroaches, book lice, spider beetles, and sometimes mice and fleas. So let's go over these pretty quick. So uh, sometimes they're mistaken with cockroaches. You can see um, cockroaches here. These are adults, uh, actually, I think uh, nymphs and adults. Uh, one major difference is that, uh, other than size, is the long antennae of cockroaches. Bed bugs, you know, you can see the antennae is not that long, but cockroaches, you know, usually have pretty long antennae, as you can see here in these two pictures. Um, and of course, you know, the, their diet is completely different. Cockroaches, they don't feed on blood, they don't go after people, uh, but bed bugs ex exclusively feed on blood and uh, sometimes you know the some cockroaches uh, are winged uh, especially males uh, so if you see anything winged you can tell that you know it's not a bed bug you know bed bugs have wing pads that's all they have uh, I'm showing it here on oops, not a very good drawing but yeah these are the wing pads so they're like kind of remnants of 
a wing, but there's no complete wing. They cannot fly. But male cockroaches, you know, have wings. You know, the adult, the adult here that, that you're looking, um, uh, this is a female. Sometimes female cockroaches, they don't develop wings. Uh, the other group of insects that are mistaken with bed bugs is uh, carpet beetles. So they come in different sizes, shapes, colors, but sometimes people uh, confuse them. Uh, but if you look carefully, these beetles, you know, have elytra and it comes in two pieces of uh, kind of leathery uh, wing, front wings, and uh, there's a suture in the middle. Bed bugs don't have that. You know, there's no suture here, as you can see. All you can see is some transverse lines, but uh, no uh, suture along the, the length of the body. Uh, the earliest stages of bed bugs can be confused with uh, mites. Sometimes we get biting mites in the structure, especially when you have rodent problems or you have birds nesting uh, uh, in the house, you know, on the roof somewhere, in the attic, um, and bats too. So sometimes, you know, you can get... Um, might uh, might in the structure and the uh, first stage of bed bugs you know is about the same size of mites maybe a little bit bigger uh, so that's the only confusing stage because the rest of them get much bigger and um, it's not that confusing but keep in mind that you know um, sometimes you get uh, mites in structures and they're coming from usually rodents or birds, uh, humans are not their preferred host. They only come into structures when they run out of food. Their host moves out, or if you put some bait stations, you know, or you trap the rats or mice, and they, there's no host left for them to feed on, so that, and that's when they come in and sometimes feed on people. And uh, mites don't have any antennae, and they're pretty small. Uh, the other one is lice, you know, they don't look that similar, but because lice also feed on humans uh, and they feed on blood, uh, sometimes people confuse them. Uh, you have the head lice, you have uh, the body lice, and, uh, and both of these feed on people. Usually body, body louse uh, feeds on the person and then moves away, similar to bed bugs. But body lice, they feed on, they stay on the uh, person's head uh, for prolonged uh, periods. And um, just as an FYI, uh, FYI, not all bed bugs are the same. You have bad bugs. Um, uh, and then you have tropical bed bug, but we are mostly concerned about this one, the central one, the common bed bug. So bed bugs are believed to uh, uh, be uh, uh, to to be to uh, be from uh, the Middle East, so coming from uh, caves when humans move into the caves. Uh, uh, so some theories suggest that they started feeding on people, and then when people uh, Left, uh, uh, left the caves, you know, bed bugs also moved with them. So that's one theory. But also, you know, there, there's a lot of evidence in different places um, uh, about uh, relatives of bed bugs. One is in Oregon. So archaeological uh, evidence show that uh, have found that several bed bug relatives in uh, Paisley Caves in Oregon and showing that you know bed bugs were uh, present in the cave, probably feeding on maybe humans, maybe bats. Uh, it's not very clear, but uh, it's not just uh, uh, other countries in Asia. And here also, there's evidence about bed bugs presence. So bed bugs are everywhere, even in the coldest states, uh, uh, U.S. states. You know, there are, you can find them in Alaska, you can find them in Hawaii, from California to New York, from Washington to California, uh, to Florida. Sorry, and uh, as I mentioned, they feed only on blood. They don't feed on anything else. Uh, humans are the primary host. But they may also feed on cats, dogs, birds, and rodents. 
if they have to, maybe especially when they don't have access to humans anymore. Let's say someone moves out and then keeps uh, some pets around in the house. Uh, that's when they uh, move to these pets. But generally speaking, they prefer humans as their host and they pierce the uh, human skin. And as you can see here, um, this is the proboscis, you know, that is inserted into the human skin. And soon after, uh, blood will flow into the proboscis and come into their abdomen. Uh, usually they feed on people at night, but again, the, you can see them during the day. Uh, yeah, I already talked about these. They can live from months to years in a normal situation with food, but if they don't feed, uh, they usually die much faster. The first stages, uh, nymphal stages, which are mature stages, they usually die pretty fast. You know, the first nymph, uh, uh, nymphal instar uh, usually dies within a few days. If they can't find a host, they can't feed, they're gonna die. But as they get older and they molt into later stages, they become more and more resistant to starvation and, and uh, extreme temperatures and things like that. Uh, usually it takes about 37 to 40 days for them to develop from egg to adults. And here you can see the average instar duration. So it takes five days for the bed bug egg to hatch and about seven days uh, for the first instar to develop and then the second one. And the fifth is instar uh, the usually develops pretty fast and become, becomes an, uh, an adult. Uh, this is, this, this, uh, slide shows the life cycle of bed bug. Uh, you can see that, you know, this is, uh, these are the eggs, you know, then you have all these stages and, um, they can reproduce all year uh, round because they live inside structures and they don't need to go out and be exposed to extreme temperatures during the winter or the summer. And, um, and that's why you see bed bugs even in Alaska, you know, in very cold places because they're always with people and move with people from place to place. The female bed bug uh, produces usually something between one and seven eggs per day for about 10 days after a single blood meal. So in order to lay, lay eggs and reproduce, they always need to feed on people because as soon as they stop feeding, you know, their uh, reproduction rate goes down. They need the blood. So a female can produce between five to 20 eggs after a single blood meal and about 100 to 113 eggs in her whole life. So now we're getting to the part that uh, is the major focus of my talk. So dispersal, how bed bugs move from place to place and how we can potentially prevent that. So bed bugs move with people, with cargo, with luggage, and they can easily hitchhike on baggage, backpacks, on purses, on shoes. Here you can see uh, a bed bug on a shoe tread. It's unbelievable. I mean, if you go to a place that is heavily infested with bed bugs, you need to check your shoes uh, when you're coming out. I mean, not to freak about it, you know, not to, you know, I don't want you to be like become really anxious about bed bugs. Uh, but 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 yeah, this happens. So if you go if you uh, go to a place that is heavily infested. Just check your uh, luggage, check your shoes, and I'm gonna show you in a, a later videos how to do that. So uh, one common scenario for bed bug dispersal is that someone, uh, let's call this person uh, John. John goes on a trip to New York, for example, and stays at the hotel, but the hotel has bed bugs. You can see the red bug here, right? And when uh, his business in, ends in New York or wh wherever, uh, they're everywhere, so it doesn't matter. Um, he will uh, bring the bed bugs uh, with him on the plane 
and then back to his house, right? And that's how people's houses, apartments, uh, condos, whatever place that they're living in gets infested with bed bugs, okay? So going on a trip uh, is one common scenario, but not always. Look at this one. So Jane goes to, works at an office. And every day she goes to her office where she works in a cubicle. And the cubicle next to her cubicle is infested with bed bugs. And the bed bugs will move from uh, that cubicle to her cubicle and uh, hitchhikes on her purse and then goes back to her home. And that's how her home gets infested with bed bugs. Remember, bed bugs are excellent hitchhikers. They can easily get on get on the luggage, on, on, on shoes, uh, pretty much everything, and, and move from place to place. Uh, they're excellent hiders. You know, they hide in tiniest cracks, crevices, sutures, and that's how they move from one place to another. So what can we do to prevent uh, bed bugs? When we talk about uh, trips, it's, uh, it's a good idea to check the place that you're staying in. So if you're going to a hotel, to a motel, uh, before putting your stuff uh, uh, in the room, you know, just do a quick inspection, especially the bed, you know, check the sheets, spring box, um, luggage rack, and you need to look for live bed bugs, eggs, uh, shed skin or molted skin, and blood stains. Uh, here I'm gonna show you a quick video from our team uh, that explains how to check for these, uh, these things when you go to a hotel. We don't hear the sound, Siavash. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't hear the sound? No. We'll oh. put a link in the chat, though. Okay, folks. okay. So I'm going to just talk over the video. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. yeah no so, so the first step, you know, if you suspect that uh, the place that you're going to stay uh, has bed bugs, as you saw here, it, you can put this your stuff in a bathtub temporarily. And this is great because... Um, you can see, you know, it's white, you know, it's slick, you know, bed box cannot move in and out easily. So that gives you a very good way of protecting your luggage. And then uh, you go and start uh, inspecting the uh, room for bed bugs. As I mentioned, you can look for uh, malted skin or adult bed bugs, as you can see here, blood stains and look, uh, pull, pull up the sheet, uh, sheets and you know, look at the mattress. Uh, if you don't suspect that the place is infested, you don't have to really spend a, whole, uh, a lot of time. But uh, if you suspect that the place is infested, you can spend more time. We call this a credit card test and it's also used for dislodging bed bugs. And this is demonstrated by my colleague, uh, Dr. Sutherland. So by running a uh, room key or your credit card, you can dislodge the bed bugs uh, if they're uh, hidden behind um, the board, bed board or uh, places like that because they can easily get into those tiny places. Uh, any place that you can stick a credit card or a room key in, bed bugs can hide in it. So because they're very flat and they're very good in hiding into those places. So uh, let me move this around so I can, uh, yeah. So you can check in everywhere, you know, the phone, the lamp, the drawer, and even the picture box. Usually they're fixed to the wall. Um, so don't try to dislodge the picture, uh, the picture from the wall, but just look around and the luggage rack, because many people put their luggage on the luggage rack 
that's a very um, common place for bed bugs to to hang out. So sometimes you can see bed bugs under these belts, uh, and and so it's a good idea to check those. You don't have to have a flashlight on you, a professional flashlight. You can just use your phone's um, flashlight and look for these signs and bed bugs. Okay. So let's see uh, what else is. It's going to be shown here. Yes, you know, you can see uh, you saw some bed bugs and uh, shed skin or molted skin. So if you see any sign, just let the management know. But again, I don't want you to become paranoid about bed bugs. Just, just keep, keep these tips um, in mind when you're tra traveling. But if everything is okay, then you can put your luggage on the luggage rack. And also, Avoid putting your uh, clothing on uh, on the couch because bed bugs love upholstered furniture like this. So don't do that. You know, hang everything, um, and and yeah, don't don't put it on on uh, surfaces like that. All right, you can see. Yeah, here you can see this is a molted skin. This is a nymph. This is an adult. And the dark spots here uh, on the body are from blood. So it means that the bed bug has recently fed on, on people. Um, all right. Yeah. And if you suspect that you have bed bugs, if possible, you can put everything in a dryer and use the uh, high temperature settings. And that will usually kill adults and eggs. But if, you're, if you have uh, like dresses, garments that are too sensitive to high temperatures, that's usually, uh, usually uh, that's not an option. So you need to go for other methods, you know, maybe hire a pest control uh, professional, a pest control service, uh, and they can take care of uh, the bed bug infestation in your home. And uh, one thing to keep in mind is that bed bugs move all the time. So even if you, uh, even if you don't uh, treat your clothing or your luggage, when a pest control professional comes to your house uh, and treats for bed bugs, anytime that bed bugs move around, they're going to be exposed to uh, pesticides or if you use trapping, you know, they will be trapped so um, you can catch them. And it's a good idea to keep your uh, luggage, if you travel a lot, away from bedrooms and maybe you can put them in, a, in your garage or somewhere, somewhere, some sort of storage away from where you sleep. Uh, that, that can really help. Okay. Yeah, so uh, we have a lot of information on our website. Uh, you can check uh, www.ipm at ucanr.edu. And we have a lot of information in the form of quick tips. Uh, these are like small cards with very uh, concise but very useful information. And then we have more thorough and more uh, comprehensive uh, documents on how to deal with various pests. All right. Uh, I show in the video, you saw some um, inspection tips. Um, here you can see blood stains. Uh, well, this is actually a bed bug, but all of these are blood stains. And uh, when they get old, usually they get dark brown to kind of black. And, but when they're fresh, you, they're usually red, you know, the, the color of uh, blood. And here you can see, uh, let me change my pointer. Uh, here you can see uh, bed bugs, you can see uh, molted skin and probably even eggs. So you can see eggs here, all these white stuff are bed bug eggs. Uh, when the infestation is low, you're not going to see anything like this, you know, because you may have one, two, three, five bed bugs total, and then maybe some eggs. So th this one is, uh, I think, from uh, a field or maybe a lab photo, uh, but usually you don't see such a thing unless the infestation is not treated for a very long time, then 
when when you come in you know you may see something like this but all these white things are bed bug eggs and most of them are hatched if you look here carefully uh the tip you know has a kind of like a lid and, and the bed bug exits the egg uh, through that opening uh, you can always monitor for bed bugs using using these traps or bed bug interceptors uh, they're called these are very handy because bed bugs are very cryptic. When you go and want to check for bed bugs, they're not going to be walking around you know, all day long so you can see them. They're going to be hidden uh, under, under in, in the mattress, in the spring box, or uh, in the couch, you know, somewhere under pillows, or deep inside. Uh, uh, inside the furniture. But by putting these monitors, you can monitor 24 seven for, you know, for a long time. You can keep the traps for a week, for two weeks. And if you have bed bugs, you're gonna catch them because as I mentioned, bed bugs move around a lot. So you can easily uh, see these guys and um, you, know, you just need to be able to pay more patient, okay? This works very well for low infestations where you have a limited number of bed bugs, not that many, like some of the pictures that I showed in previous, previous slides. If you have a few and someone is complaining, maybe your friend, your family, um, you can always use these bed bug inter interceptors. And um, the interesting thing about these is that uh, they trap the bed bugs because they have slick surfaces. So uh, uh, as you can see here, this is a very heavy infestation, okay? This, you're not gonna see such a thing unless uh, you have a very, very heavy infestation. But bed bugs, you know, basically when, when they get in, this is a most like uh, structure, the, the narrower kind of like uh, um, opening here. And uh, bed bugs can get in, but when they want to climb up, they can because the surfaces are very slick and uh, it doesn't let them to get out. So it's like a one-way kind of trap without using any pesticides or any even sticky surfaces. And just to let you know, bed bugs, you can catch bed bugs using sticky traps. Uh, they are smarter than cockroaches and other pests. You know, as soon as they feel that uh, a surface uh, surface is very sticky, they're gonna just avoid it and go back, and uh, they'll never you'll never be able to catch them. So, and that's why um, these traps were uh, invented and used because there's no sticky parts. Uh, it's the opposite. You know, everything is so slick. You know, slippery. So when when they get in. They can't get out. And as you can see, <clears throat> you can place these under the legs of couches, uh, of beds, um, uh, or bed frames, and uh, just wait. And sometimes you can just put it in the corner of a room. You don't have to put it under a leg of a table or stool or couch or bed. You can just put it somewhere. And, and as the bed bugs explore, they will climb up uh, the trap uh, the bed bug interceptor and will be caught. So uh, this is very helpful, very helpful. <clears throat> Excuse me. So remember when I talked about Jane going to office to her office and then bringing back bed bugs uh, from the next cubicle. Uh, sometimes bed bug problems become very persistent, meaning that uh, you call a pest control company, they come in, they apply insecticides, uh, any type of insecticide, doesn't matter. And um, you think that, you know, they have eradicated the bed bugs until, you know, you, real, you see another one. You see a new bed bug after one, two, three, four weeks. And um, that's when you realize that you are still, you still have bed bugs in your home. Uh, the reality, the truth is that uh, many times bed bugs are eradicated, but new bed bugs will come in into your house, to your home. So remember, uh, so let's say, yeah, let's say Jane decides to eradicate or hire a pest control company to uh, eradicate the bed bugs at her home. So they spray and look at these red bugs, you know, bed bugs, they're all gone, right? 
but if you remember, Mr. John uh, brought some bed bugs and he happens to be a colleague of Jane and he works at the same office. So he brings bed bugs every day that he comes to the office. Uh, he brings bed bugs to the office and to the cubicle next to Jane and probably moves some back home. And this repeats, you know, gets repeated every day. So as you can guess, the bed bugs from his cubicle can move to Jane's perch and then, you know, she can bring them home and the home gets reinfested. That's why and that's how some bed bug infestations become so persistent. It's not because the pesticide don't work or the pest control company is not doing a great job, but it's because new bed bugs will come in. So keep in mind that you know bed bugs easily move from one place to another. So if you uh, if you're dealing with a persistent bed bug infestation, think about the ways that bed bugs can potentially get to your home. And um, that needs to be resolved because it doesn't matter how many times you treat your home, as long as you have these external sources, uh, you're going to have uh, bed bugs again. And uh, it costs a lot of money. It's very frustrating. And I'm sure uh, none of you uh, want that. Uh, <clears throat> And at the end, uh, I'm just gonna uh, touch on uh, bed bug control. I'm not gonna go deep because this talk was only about bed bug uh, prevention and biology, but you can control bed bugs using various methods. You can use, uh, or a pest control company can use insecticides, you know, liquid insecticides, they can use dust or they can fumigate structures. Uh, fumigation is usually more common uh, for large buildings such as hotels um, and like public buildings or uh, like apartment complexes. Um, but for single units, uh, you know, or even for single family houses, it's not done unless the infestation is really bad. And just to let you know, guys, uh, fumigation is mostly done for driver termites and to a lower extent for uh, bed bugs and uh, then sometimes cockroaches. I've seen uh, pest control companies do fumigation for cockroaches, but that's not common. That's not a common uh, approach. And then you can use non-chemical methods. You can vacuum. If you see a ton of bed bugs, you can vacuum them, but you need to be careful because when you vacuum, uh, they go into the canister and then you need to dispose the canister in the proper way because you don't want them to get out and disperse to other places in your house. Um, you can use trapping. Bed bug interceptors are excellent ways of monitoring and killing small populations of bed bugs. If you have a huge number of bed bugs, maybe that's not the best or the fastest way, but in low infestations, trapping can be extremely helpful. Then you can do heat treatments. Um, this is done also for driver termites. You can use steamers. Uh, mm, steamers can be very uh, effective, but you need to cover all the places you know, where bed bugs can potentially uh, be found because if you miss one place, you know, they're gonna come back again and, and reproduce and feed on people. So you don't want that. And uh, yeah, so we can do like uh, for heat treatment, sometimes you can uh, heat treat a single furniture like the bed or a couch and or you can do a whole structure heat treatment. And there's, you, uh, there's no pesticide use uh, for a uh, whole structure heat treatment, but you just need to realize that kind of like fumigation, uh, you have less um, hassle, but, but, but still, you know, you have to deal with some problems such as, uh, heat damage to the house. Uh, and uh, of course you need to leave the house, but for a very shorter period of time. For fumigation, you have to leave your house for a few days, but for a uh, whole structure heat treatment, you know, usually it's within a few hours and you can come back. Uh, all right, just to summarize, bed bugs are everywhere. And if not uh, controlled, they can reproduce fast. They feed only and only on blood, uh, on blood. 
and you can check for signs uh, like like shit skins or molted skins or uh, blood stains on beds, presence of eggs and live or dead adults. And uh, again, remember that not all people react in the same way to bed bug bites. So uh, I personally never provide identification if someone sends me or shows shows me uh, a, a skin reaction saying, oh, look, look, look at the, my, my, my skin, you know, these welts, you know, do you think these are bed bugs? You know, I never provide identification because it's almost impossible to tell. Sometimes they bite in rows, but uh, other times, you know, there's no pattern. So, and with that, I'm going to finish my talk. And thank you, um, everyone, Carrie and Belinda, for having me. And if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Great. Thank you, Siavash, so much for that excellent information.